Welcome to the seventh and final video in our series on traditional approaches to cost assignment. In this video, we continue to look at methods of inter-service department reallocations. Specifically, this video takes us through the simultaneous equation method. As we will see, this method results in the same answer as a repeated distribution method. Let us consider our learning objectives for this video. As with our previous videos, we will begin by revising the underlying workings of the departmental overhead rates. Once we have done this, we will continue with the same example we have been using in previous videos, this time using the simultaneous equation method to allocate our service department overheads to the production departments. A quick recap of how departmental overhead rates work. In our previous video on allocating the overhead cost to the departments, we focused on steps one to three, which took us through determining the total manufacturing overhead cost, identifying the separate departments, and ended with us allocating our overheads to the departments in the factory. In this video, we will again be focusing on steps four to seven, which look at the reallocation of service departments, the calculation of the departmental overhead rates, and allocation to the products. This slide is just a reminder of the different methods we have for inter-service department reallocations. In this video, we'll be looking at the last method being the simultaneous equation method. So what is the basic idea with the simultaneous equation method? What we see is that this method uses simultaneous equations in order to achieve the same allocations as the repeated distribution method. This method is a bit more complex as it requires us to generate and solve simultaneous equations. However, it does result in a shorter allocation process. Let us have a look at our example to see how this method works in practice. Remember, this first paragraph tells us that our factory has two production departments, namely cutting and assembly, and two service departments, namely procurement and maintenance. We are then presented with two tables, the first table provides us with our overhead costs for the factory in total, while the second table provides us with some basic information about each department, which we used in our previous video to allocate the overhead costs to the departments. We are then provided with the required where we need to value this product. Notice at the end now, it tells us that we need to apply the simultaneous equation method for inter-service department reallocations. Now remember that in video three of the series, we allocated out the overheads to the various departments. If you can't remember how we arrived at the numbers on screen, please go back and watch the video on allocating overheads to the departments. Our next step then is to allocate our service departments, which were procurement and maintenance, to our production departments of cutting and assembly. For the simultaneous equation method, the first thing we need to do is arrive at our simultaneous equations. This can be a bit tricky, so watch carefully as we go through it. Now what I have on the slide is our total overheads prior to allocation of the service departments in the first table, and the second table contains the information we have been using to allocate out our service departments. I will begin by deriving the simultaneous equation for the procurement department. Here we really want to ask ourselves how much total overhead should be in the procurement department. Here we know that the procurement department should at least include the 98,000 Rand that currently sits in the department. In addition, we know that some portion of the maintenance department overheads need to be allocated to the procurement department as well. This is because we see that the maintenance department does some work for the procurement department. So we need to add this. The question is, what proportion of the maintenance department needs to be added on? The answer to this is how much work did the maintenance department do for the procurement department? Be very careful here as this part can be confusing. So we ask ourselves, how much work did maintenance do for procurement? We know that maintenance is allocated based on maintenance hours. The maintenance department did a total of 1,000 hours during the period 
of which 150 hours related to the procurement department. Therefore, 150 out of the 1,000 should be allocated to procurement. Now that we have worked through the equation for the procurement department, take a moment to formulate the maintenance department's equation on your own before we go through it together. Great, so I hope you have written down your equation. Now remember, maintenance must equal the 70,500 Rand already included in the department plus some portion of the procurement department. What proportion of the procurement department should be allocated to maintenance? Again, we ask ourselves, how much work did the procurement department do for the maintenance department? Remember from our previous videos that we have been allocating the procurement department based on raw material orders. We see that of the 100 raw material orders made by procurement, 15 of these relate to the maintenance department. Therefore, 15 out of 100 of the procurement department needs to be allocated to the maintenance department. So how do we solve these equations simultaneously? Give it a try on your own and see if you can do it. For these equations, we see that we have two unknowns in each. Therefore, to solve the equations, we need to solve them simultaneously by substituting one equation into the other. It does not matter which one you substitute into the other, so I am going to substitute maintenance into the procurement equation. I have colored procurement red and maintenance blue, so you can see how I have swapped the word maintenance in the procurement equation for the calculation of maintenance. I have also abbreviated the word procurement to P to take up less space. Notice now that my equation only contains the P for procurement and it no longer contains any reference to the maintenance department. Because there is only one unknown, I can now solve for P. So first, I simplify the fractions. I can then multiply out the brackets. I then subtract the 0.0225P on each side. Remember, what is done to one side must be done to the other as well to keep the equation balanced. We can then simplify by doing the addition and subtraction. Now to get P by itself, we need to divide both sides by 0.9775. And we can arrive then at the procurement department being equal to 111,074 Rand. To calculate the value of maintenance, we simply substitute the value of the procurement department, which we now know is 111,074 Rand into the maintenance equation. We can then solve this equation and we arrive at the value of the maintenance department of 87,161 Rand. Now we can come back to our allocation table. Remember, based on our simultaneous equations, we calculated the new overheads in procurement as 111,074 Rand and the new overheads in maintenance as 87,161 Rand. So we replace our current totals in procurement and maintenance with these new amounts. Now you will notice that once we have made this replacement, the total overheads of cutting, assembly, procurement and maintenance no longer add up to the total of 598,000 Rand. It now adds up to 627,735 Rand which is problematic, as we have created more overheads than what we actually have. If we allocate more overheads than what we have, we will end up overcosting our product. It is very important that you pay attention now to see how we allocate out our two service departments, so that by the end of the allocation process, we have only accounted for the correct overhead amount of 598,000 Rand. With the simultaneous equation method, it does not matter which department we close off first. So I will start with procurement. If you want, you can start with maintenance and you will arrive at the same answer. 
Now remember from our previous videos, procurement relates to our raw material orders. So we're going to allocate 50 out of 100, which is the total number of raw material orders, to cutting, and we're going to allocate 35 out of 100 to assembly. We are going to allocate nothing to maintenance. Now you may ask, if we are allocating 50 out of 100 to cutting and 35 out of 100 to assembly, we are only allocating out a total of 85 out of 100, or 85% of the overhead. What happens to the rest of the overheads? Remember that we have already allocated out the 15 out of 100 to maintenance. This was done when we were deriving our simultaneous equations, which is now presented on screen. You should also remember that we have already increased the maintenance overheads to account for the allocation from procurement to maintenance. We don't want to duplicate this allocation of overheads, so we ignore the reallocation to maintenance. So remember, 50 out of 100 goes to cutting, and 35 out of 100 goes to assembly. Nothing goes to maintenance because this was already accounted for in the simultaneous equations. You will notice that the sum of cutting and assembly adds up to less than what is deducted from procurement. Remember, this difference has already been incorporated into maintenance through the simultaneous equations. Now we need to do the same thing for the maintenance department. Remember in our previous video, we determined that maintenance hours was the best method to allocate out our maintenance department. So again, 350 out of 1000 goes to cutting, 500 out of 1000 goes to assembly, and nothing goes to procurement. Remember that the 150 out of 1000 allocation to procurement has already been taken into account in the simultaneous equations as shown on screen. So remember, 350 out of 1000 goes to cutting, and 500 out of 1000 goes to assembly. Nothing goes to procurement because this was already accounted for in the simultaneous equations. Again, the sum of cutting and assembly does not add up to what was deducted from maintenance. This difference has already been incorporated into maintenance through the simultaneous equations. Now we can total our overheads for each column. Notice what happens here. If we add up the overheads for the cutting and assembly departments, we arrive back at the correct total overheads of 598,000 Rand. The additional overheads that we created through the simultaneous equations have disappeared and we are back at the 598,000 Rand. Our next step now is to identify our driver for each production department. From our previous videos, you should remember that we have already seen that cutting is labor intensive and we need to use direct labor hours, while assembly is capital intensive and we use machine hours. So we can fill in our cost drivers and divide our total overheads for each department by the cost driver for each department to arrive at our separate overhead rates for each department of 5 Rand and 89 cents per direct labor hour for cutting and 9 Rand and 54 cents per machine hour for assembly. Notice importantly that the overhead absorption rates generated by the simultaneous equation method are identical to those obtained under the repeated distribution method. Let us finish off our example by costing the product as we were initially required to do. Remember, our basic format is the direct material cost plus the direct labor cost to give us our prime cost. We then add our variable and fixed overheads to arrive at our total cost. In this example, we do not have variable overheads. Because the overhead absorption rates are identical to those obtained under the repeated distribution method, the valuation of the product will be identical as well. So let us do it together. Now our direct materials and direct labor are fairly straightforward. You should remember that we calculated the total prime cost of 220 Rand in our previous videos. This will not change between the reallocation methods, so I'll rather focus on the fixed overheads. 
When allocating the overheads to the products, it doesn't matter which order we do this, so we will start with the cutting department. Remember that the cutting department is labor intensive, so we want to ignore the machine hours and only consider the labor hours of five direct labor hours. The five direct labor hours in the cutting department then need to be multiplied by the cutting departmental overhead rate, which we calculated earlier at 5 Rand and 89 cents per direct labor hour. Notice we are matching the 5 direct labor hours used in the cutting department with the 5 Rand and 89 cents per direct labor hour for the cutting department. This gives us our overhead allocation for cutting of 29 Rand and 45 cents per unit. Now we move on to the assembly department. Remember, we determined that this department was capital intensive and the overhead allocation rate was per machine hour. Therefore, in the assembly department, we ignore our labor hours and are only concerned with the seven machine hours. The seven machine hours in the assembly department then need to be multiplied by the assembly department's overhead rate, which we calculated earlier at 9 Rand and 54 cents per machine hour. Notice we are matching the 7 machine hours in the assembly department with the 9 Rand and 54 cents per machine hour for the assembly department. This gives us our overhead allocation for assembly of 66 Rand and 78 cents per unit. We can then finish off our example by adding the overhead costs to the prime costs to arrive at a total cost of 316 Rand and 23 cents per unit. This brings us to the end of our series on traditional approaches to cost assignment. Be sure to check out our other videos and series. Thank you for joining us.